Hello and welcome. My name is Amir Amelzadeh. I'm an associate professor of accounting at Site Business School, University of Oxford. First of all, I would like to thank the conference organizers for inviting me to speak um, at this conference. It's a great pleasure to be here, even though um, we can't meet in person. Let me share my slides and kick off. Okay, great. So the title of my talk um, is Sustainability in Capital Markets. Do investors um, care about ESG? So, so this talk is based on, um, on several of my research projects and some of which have been published and some of which are still working papers. And I rely heavily on, on work with um, some of my Berlin colleagues at other institutions. So in this line of research, um, I'm largely interested in whether, why and how investors consider sustainability information in their investment processes. So to investigate this question, um, we have compiled uh, some field evidence from a large survey with institutional investors and also examined investment portfolios and portfolio holdings of um, um, retail investors, of wealthy retail investors. So the aim of the talk is to provide you with some summary evidence from my research, what we know about investor attitudes towards sustainability and the motivations, and secondly, to make some suggestions for future research in areas that I think are still largely unexplored. So um, in the recent past, um, particularly after the financial crisis, we have seen a rapid increase in, in investments that follow sustainability or ESG, so environmental, social, and governance criteria. And in addition to anecdotal evidence, um, and there's anecdotal evidence that suggests that more and more investors, particularly large asset managers, are becoming more vocal in demanding um, investee companies that they take responsibility considerations into account when making um, corporate uh, decisions. Whether this is um, the policies on climate change, political donations, or employment practices. Now, despite a large interdisciplinary body of research that examines sustainability related topics um, that spans finance, accounting, economics, management, and many other adjacent fields, I think we still lack a deeper understanding of why, how, and how investors use um, ESG information. And whether this trend that we are witnessing at the moment is just a fad or actually um, having in in, in economically meaningful impact on asset allocation and asset prices. So um, the existing um, research, which is mostly empirical archival, um, already provides us with some insights, uh, suggesting that institutional investment portfolios have increasingly tilted towards more sustainable firms, that investors increasingly engage with their firms on sustainability issues, and that particularly climate change related risks are of concerns to investors. We have so far less evidence on sustainability attitudes of um, be and behaviors of retail investors. The most compelling of these, I think, comes from studies on mutual fund flows that show that these flows are largely sensitive to um, the fund sustainability scores. So against this backdrop, I want to first go over the field evidence um, on institutional investors before then going into, going into more detail on uh, the evidence on wealthy um, retail investors. So with the help of um, BNY Mellon, we ran a survey, a survey that captures the views of large um, asset managers and asset owners. So we captured 500 of mostly mainstream investors around the globe, majority coming from North America and Europe. And we captured around 40% um, of global assets under management with these um, asset managers. So in the first instance, we were interested in trying to understand what motivates investors to use ESG information and whether they do so at all, we didn't know. 
So the table here on the slides provides the percentages of the respective responses to this question. So the large majority responded that they do um, take ESG into account, predominantly so because they believe it to be material for um, investment purposes and for investment performance. So I think this is interesting. It's interesting because the academic evidence at that point had been rather mixed. We also found some interesting regional differences with more European investors than US considering financial motives, but also ethical motives as drivers for ESG integration. Part of the higher ethical motivation, I think, comes from the existence of more religious endowments in, among um, European asset owners, uh, which we also had in our sample, um, for whom ethical norms, of course, play a, a large role or an equally large role as um, financial motives. So uh, the data then also suggests that US investors are significantly more skeptical with regards to financial materiality of ESG information. And consequently, as you can see in this table, fewer US investors um, actually use ESG information compared to European. But there's also a um, consensus that um, the data overall is just not as reliable enough to be used for investment purposes. In additional results that I haven't tabulated here, um, we show that um, particularly the lack of standardization and comparability seems to inhibit investors to integrate ESG information. Something I think the accounting standard setters, the, the um, IFRS and ISB, um, and the European regulators are currently looking into. So we then try to understand um, a little bit more in detail financial materiality. And um, what we find, not surprisingly, is that not all ESG information is equally material to all investors across, um, and to all sectors um, across um, the spectrum, right? So this graphic here that you can see on, on your slides, it shows the percentage of responses for which each ESG item is material in, for the respective sector that the, um, the, the respondents um, provided us. So, um, one key takeaway here is that um, the company's employee policies and governance policies, for example, are material irrespective of the sector. But then the other E and DS factors largely vary across sectors, but in, you could say, meaningful ways. So for investors, for example, uh, environmental issues are more important for resource intensive sectors such as energy and material, for example, and social factors such um, as the impact of products on data privacy or um, uh, the impact of products or data privacy are more important um, for what I would call knowledge intensive sectors. And this lines up with the anecdotal evidence of recent events that we have seen in the energy and the social media sectors. Now, how do investors actually use this information? So how do they use sustainability information? Consistent with the anecdotal evidence that I mentioned earlier, they largely seem to be engaging with their investee companies and um, integrating this information into their valuation or use it um, to screen firms in for portfolio construction. Now, um, this, there's some interesting differences between US and uh, European uh, investors. And you can, for example, know that European investors are more likely to engage with firms while US investors are more likely to use negative screening. And this might then also explain um, the higher skepticism of US investors towards the financial materiality that I showed you before, um, because if these um, investors use more exclusion strategies, these strategies have been shown to actually have a, likely have a negative or at best neutral effect on um, the financial risk and returns of portfolios. 
Now in Europe, uh, more investors are also um, using thematic investments, so which are green bonds or investment vehicles that are dedicated at specific themes, such as investments in water and the like. Now this graph um, summarizes the responses to two Likert scale questions that um, which I put into one here, on which um, this, um, on which we asked the investors to res to respond to questions that delve a bit more into detail on which strategy they believe to become more important in the future, and also what impact that strategy likely has on returns. Now here, it seems that um, the respondents believe that engagements, integration, and screening strategies, so essentially the top three strategies from the previous slide, are also expected to be, become more important in the future. And except for the negative screening, in line with what I just said, um, so the portfolio exclusion, these strategies are also expected to have a relatively more positive impact on, on returns than other strategies. So this is um, essentially what I wanted to, to cover in terms of the institutional evidence that we found from this, um, this field survey. But let me now move on to uh, the evidence on individual or retail investors, and in our case, wealthy retail investors. Now for this project, um, we were lucky to gain access to a proprietary data set of investment holdings of private wealth investors. And this was at one of the largest European private banks, um, again, AMRO, with more than 100,000 clients and about 200 billion in assets under management. Now, there are some interesting features about this data set that we were able to exploit. And in particular, they, these features were able to uh, were ena enabled us to draw some more, I would say, closer to causal inferences. Specifically, through a change in the in, an, in the ESG accounting uh, in the ESG ratings provider that the bank used for its clients somewhat halfway through our sample period, um, we were able to, to exploit or to use the fact that the issue reporting to the bank's clients changed in the way that um, now for a wider universe of assets, these ESG ratings became available that the bank then reported to their clients. So that we have essentially a, a treatment group that got treated with ESG ratings without having the underlying sustainability characteristics changed, while also having a control group that always had their ESG uh, ratings reported, and hence can um, exploit this in, in a difference in difference, and in our case, actually in a triple difference setting. Now, um, with, so we essentially had assets for which, um, which previously did not have their sustainability characteristics reported, and now these characteristics become more saliently featured in reporting to their, their clients. We also explored some variation by client type and country. So um, the bank re only reports to certain clients, the advisory clients, but not to clients that use the bank for execution purposes, and um, also has differences in how they report across countries in Europe. So um, for example, sustainability characteristics of the assets are included in reports in the Netherlands, Belgium, and Germany to varying frequency though, but not in France. And we can exploit this uh, variation as well. So it's always nice to have um, research findings that you can essentially summarize in one picture, in one graph here, and this is it. Um, the graph shows the cumulative access flows over our sample period, which essentially starts in January 2017, um, all the way to December 2019. So then the graph shows consistent inflows in excess of normal flows, in what, what we estimated as normal flows, um, into assets with the highest ESG rating and it access outflows from assets um, with the lowest ESG rating or sustainability rating. 
And these differences were genomically large. And we estimated these to be uh, cumulative at 3 billion for this sample over that period. Now, I'll skip over the technical details, but to just for your information, how we run our um, estimations, so your panel regression, then our triple difference estimator, as I uh, mentioned before, and also run an event study on changes in, in the ESG ratings to, to test whether a message react to, um, to firms that get upgraded in their sustainability ratings or downgrade. No, but let me show you the, the results from our um, panel regressions. So the table here shows the differences in, in investments. So average investments, average flows into assets with high ESG or the highest ESG rating um, and the lowest ESG rating controlling for a host of other um, effects and fixed effects. So first things to note is um, that there's significantly positive Flows, so significantly uh, larger inflows into assets with the highest uh, sustainability rating, so the most sustainable assets. And this effect seems to only exist for or persist for investors um, that actually receive sustainability information from the bank. So here the advisory column, but not for the clients in um, the execution only, um, among the execution only clients that I. Uh, just explained before. So then, as I mentioned, we run um, this quasi-natural experiment where we look at what happens once assets for which no rating was available at that bank are not reported um, and then became reported and, and estimated how investment flows of those wealthy uh, retail clients changed um, after those ratings became reported. So um, these uh, here, the, the slides here uh, show you the results. Essentially, the, um, we only show the, the triple difference estimator, and um, this showed that this shows that essentially investment flows into assets with the highest ratings. Um, are higher than those into assets with the lowest rating for uh, the treatment group, so for the group that, that had their rating reported, even after controlling for differences in flows within the control group across the same ratings categories that always had their ESG ratings reported. So we're getting closer to, a, um, to isolating and identifying a causal effect of um, the, the ESG ratings here. And finally, maybe also from an inference standpoint, a bit more robust, um, are these event study um, results where we further test um, whether investors react to changes uh, to these um, sustainability ratings. And the table shows cumulative standard abnormal investment flows. So flows in excess of what we would have expected given our benchmark estimation of normal flows into these assets um, during periods without a change. So again, we find that investors, so you have the advisory group only um, that have these um, ratings and also the ratings changes reported um, react to these changes with increases in investment flows. Now, what does this tell us? So to me, this says that um, investors generally, so institutional as well as individual investors seem to care about sustainability ratings. But at least from our evidence on institutional investors, we also know that they care for different reasons and incorporate ESG information in different ways. So the evidence tells us that not all ESG information is equally important for investment decisions. Um, and it, this importance or the materiality as accountants would um, call it, likely also varies across countries, sectors, and um, even firms within the same cycle. Now this in turn likely has implications for the reporting of and the demand for ESG information. We also find strong evidence, um, as I showed you, that the retail investors consider ESG ratings, particularly if they are made aware of these ratings um, in reporting. So which brings me to areas now which I believe are open for further research. 
So first, I think it's um, it's likely that ESG factors that are financially material don't necessarily overlap with those that are important from a societal standpoint. So the question then is that if financial materiality is the primary motive that I've shown you to invest according to um, sustainable um, to sustainable principle, then whether that leads to allocation of funds in areas that are not the most desirable um, or pressing in terms of um, in terms of um, sustainable development. So so far we don't really know much about these consequences and. And this trade-off um, around the financialization of sustainable development. Second, if ESG ratings have such a large economic effect on asset allocations as we find, do these allocations actually lead to mispricing? That is, so are there um, are these allocations actually efficient given the limited supply of sustainable assets? So one only needs to look at current valuations of, let's say, recycling companies to find anecdotal evidence of the hotness of um, sustainability in, in the current environment. Again, the equilibrium asset pricing effects are just recently being um, investigated in, in the financial economics literature, but I think there's, uh, there's a lot more um, to be done. Third, despite numerous efforts, at least in my view, uh, the evidence on financial returns to sustainability is still inconclusive. It might, this might have to do with the fact that prior research conflates and averages the different investment motivations and strategies that um, we find among our investors, and that they naturally have different impact on returns, such as exclusion versus, let's say, engagement strategies. There's also still, um, I think, a lack of uh, or not much direct evidence on firm or I would even go one step further, even better operating level um, evidence on operating performance effects within firms. Now that data is difficult to, to get, but I think um, I'm thinking here of co um, eco efficiency, for example, or productivity increases, reputational and brand impact on of sustainability efforts and so on. I think that um, we're still lacking evidence um, for, for these. And lastly, I think it is somewhat concerning to find that large amount of investments follow sustainability ratings. Um, as I've shown you um, in the evidence on the retail investors, um, given that these sustainability ratings are based on information that is um, large, largely not standardized nor audited. So the question then in this raises is whether ratings agencies and um, and hence investment flows that follow these ratings are um, are duped by greenwashing um, or, or firms that engage in greenwashing. Now I think there is a vast amount of um, opportunity here for research, um, but obviously it is very hard to um, detect greenwashing. And to find measures to detect greenwashing, not uh, not to mention even whether the greenwashing actually have causal has a causal effects on sustainability ratings or investment allocations. But nevertheless, clever researchers, um, I hope, might find ingenious ways to to disentangle these effects. I think these are promising um, avenues. So, in short, I think there is still much. Um, to research in this area on the role of sustainability in capital markets and its effects um, on investment flows and asset allocations and um, asset pricing. And I'm sure this conference will showcase some of the cutting edge research in, in this field and adjacent fields. And I wish you all a productive conference. Thank you very much and all the best.